Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Mossy Creek Mushrooms, and uh, pardon me if I'm losing my voice a little bit. Uh, don't know what happened just the past couple of days. Voice has been going in and out. So, <clears throat> but today I want to show you. <laughs> there it goes cracking. <clears throat> today, guys, I really want to go over what I'm calling I don't know a strain day. Um, I, I, I don't know. The, I want to go over strains and genetics and things like that um, regularly with you guys to kind of uh, give you guys a, a good broad spectrum of, of some of the genetics available out in the field. So we'll be trialing new strains regularly and showing you guys the proof in the pudding, so to speak, of, of all the mushrooms that can be grown with all of this stuff. Um, <laughs> boy, I'm getting some fog in the face now. This, the fog was not on when I set the camera up. Um, it's that House of Hydro fog. Code Mossy at houseofhydro.com. Those guys will set you up with some good fogging machines that'll hit you in the face and feel like a cool breeze. Anyways, <clears throat> I want to go over strains on a regular basis with you guys. I get this question a lot about what strains are the best, what strains do I recommend, and uh, why mine are different than anyone else's, or why anyone else's is different than anyone else's. So. Today, to kick this off, um, I'm considering this part two. I'm going to consider my King Blue video that I made a while back, part one. Um, strains are really your key out of poverty when it comes to mushrooms. You know, you might pay a little extra for good genetics um, from any kind of reputable breeder. You might get good genetics if you buy a little $5 wedge or, you know, a really cheap strain or a $6 liquid culture from someone. Um, a lot of times those six dollar liquid culture guys what they've done is they've gone to someone else's website like Lenny Rockwell's um, they'll buy one of everything he's got and then they're gonna sell it and they just use him as their culture library to maintain their cultures and you know that works out pretty well for them and it gets strains out there pretty cheap but uh, they're not really having to pay the price to maintain their strains they're not having to pay the price to do any research or anything else like that so that's why they tend to be cheaper. They're being subsidized by people like Lenny. Um, that said, like I said, you can get good genetics, you might not, but it's kind of a crapshoot. And if you want to be sure, you know, some of these companies that have good strains will make you pay a little extra. You know, when you order a bag of uh, Spawn from Amosil, Lamberts, or any of these guys who've been in the business for a very, very long time, they're going to make you pay for it. That's not cheap Spawn. Um, when you're buying from someone who has strains that you can't get anywhere else, you're going to pay a little bit more because that's the only place to get it and it's unique. And I mean, once it's bought regularly and then traded throughout the networks, then it becomes a little bit more, you know, out there, a little cheaper and everything else. But by that point, usually the big guys have got improvements to their strains or their lines that the smaller guys don't. So it just kind of depends on where you want to be. Um, when you're starting out, I think trading's a great way to go. As you start getting into it and you really want to make money off mushrooms, it's best, I think, to just buy good genetics. All right, all of that said, the strain that we're going to go over today is a new one, fairly new one to me, fairly new on the market. I've seen everyone grow it, and I thought, you know what? If everybody's growing it and they're having that good a time with it, i got to try it. It's the Black Pearl King. It's called the Black Pearl King, I think, in large part because, well, it's it does have a much more black cap than like a king oyster or anything else and it kind of grows like a pearl oyster and kind of like a king oyster and a lot of people are saying that it's a hybrid between an Austriatus oyster which is a tree oyster and an orangi which is uh, the king oysters when I went to any Asian sources that I could find uh, particularly tracing this back as far back as I could to the to the company that made the strain they say that it is the, the cross between a European and an Asian Austriatus. Now, that said, I don't know if that's a translation problem, if it's really not a hybrid and it just grows a lot like a king. I don't know yet. We're doing tests and we're probably going to send it off to get uh, sequenced just to see exactly where it lies because I'm very, very interested in this thing. In the meantime, I'm doing some crossing tests to see if it will breed with Austriatus or if it will breed with Orangi or if its isolates will show one direction or the other. Now, to get to the good stuff, the meat, so to speak, and boy does this mushroom have meat. Uh, this mushroom, the black pearl, is a lot like a king oyster. It is incredibly meaty. Um, it is not just meaty, it is heavy like a king. It's fleshy. It is. 
It, I mean, like, you can really use it for pretty much anything you use a king oyster for. But, it is so much easier to grow than a king oyster. I, I'm, my mind's blown. I kind of fought this black pearl away for a little bit, thinking, ah, yeah, really, you know, people have this all the time, where they've got the new strain, and it's rarely the case. You know, new strains are good, and they're usually different, but to have a vast improvement, I think this is a vast improvement. I'm growing kings side by side with it. I'm preferring it over kings. I'm getting less contamination with it. I'm getting it faster turnaround. I'm getting the same price point for it because it they use it very much the same way. Um, and I'm basically able to replace a lot of my king production with it. I am not able to replace my giant king oyster strain with it because it just doesn't grow as big as my giant kings. Um, but it does fill the role for pretty much any other kind of king oyster production that you want to do. Another thing about it, it grows in these gigantic clusters. A lot of king oysters will grow in clusters if you, if you, uh, you know, especially if you side fruit them like we do, they'll grow in clusters. But they don't always have um, good yields in a cluster. I mean, usually you can trim it down and get one oyster to grow really big, or you can grow a whole bunch of little ones that look a lot like the bottle farm oyster, uh, king oysters. The drawback to this for the black pearl for me is that I'm seeing a wide range of phenotypes expressed. That's just a, a way of saying I'm seeing a lot of different bodily expressions. Normally that's not a problem. I love diversity in my oysters. In fact, it's what I want all more than anything else. I want to see as many different strains and weird looking oyster mushrooms out in the world as what you see tomato strains. I mean, I, you know, the wild boar guy that, that breeds all those tomatoes was speckled and big and green and small and tiny and purple and blue and I love it. I love the diversity in the grow room. However, when I'm trying to sell an oyster as a king oyster, for instance, I don't like it whenever one cluster has got tons and tons of little mushrooms and then one cluster has got a few giant ones and I'm about to show you one back here that it's got like three giant <laughs> king oyster looking mushrooms on it with gigantic caps and then like a whole bunch of little ones on the side and it's you know you know it, it's one of those things I could do more work and more labor to trim all those little ones off and really get the big ones expressed but that's just more on my labor bill so you know, we, we're trying to figure this one out and see exactly where it fits. Is it going to be a mixed oyster? Is it going to be a king oyster? Now, as far as the heaviness is concerned, why don't we just go pick uh, one of these clusters and weigh it out on the scale that's just outside the grow room and see what we're talking about first flush off a block. XL, because I am an XL MFer. And yes, I said him after. Mushroom farmer, get your mind out of the gutter. Once we have our handy dandy gloves on, we can go pick this mushroom. This is a first flush off Black Pearl. This mushroom right here is the one I was talking about. You see we got little caps right there and these giant mushrooms coming off of it. Alright, so right here is these little ones and I mean they look like bottle farm kings right small not terribly large and then we get these things which are just really fat stemmed they're, they're softer than kings but they've got a really good texture to them you can see that guy right there I mean look at that holy cow this guy right here we're gonna pick him and this is something else I like about the Black Pearl. It is so easy to pick. He says as he has a hard time picking it. All right. Now that, oh my gosh, if I can get it beside me. That's a big mushroom. I mean, look at that. My hand doesn't even fit in the cap. Oh my goodness, guys, this cluster is huge. I'm gonna try to get it on here without tearing it up. Holy crap, that's a big broken. Four pounds. Four pounds. 
I sell that to restaurants at $10 a pound. So, uh, well, I mean, I sell by volume, but roughly by the pound, it's like it comes out to about a 10 to 12 pound case is what I end up getting off of that um, that particular mushroom because I sell by a standardized case. So I can fit about three of those clusters in there, um, which comes out, if I, they're all that big, comes out a little just short of 10 pounds. Most of them are not that way. Let me go pick another one and I'll show you the weight on that one. And check that out. That is a pretty mushroom. There we go. Another 2.4 pounds. So it's never quite as heavy as a king, but it's pretty decent weight for an oyster. Normally I wear my mask when I'm in here, guys. You should too. Shouldn't be working in a grow room without a respirator on. I only am in here without a mask on when I'm talking to you all. So, all right. Let's see if I can pick her one handed. Nope. One sec. Another good one. There we go, 3.12. All right, so I try to give you guys as many one takes as possible on these weights. So here is a box of the black pearl. And I'm gonna grab this one. This is also a box of the black pearl. Let me set you guys down. And get you focused on the weight. Okay. So right here. This is box number one. I had that four pound cluster in it. And the weight is, I can't see that on the camera, 11. 0.05. Our boxes weigh about a pound, so that comes out to just over, just barely over 10 pounds of mushrooms. And for a $100 case, it averages out there on um, to $10 a pound. And then the second case is 9.6. So that's what I mean. Like the, the Black Pearl has a lot of varying weight, even though it has the same amount of clusters in it. Um, and this is the one with, that has those big gigantic caps that were, um, this is the one that had the big gigantic caps that were um, huge but then had a bunch of little mushrooms on the side. So I'm not sure why the Black Pearl's doing that. So as I said, if any of you guys have any um, experience with it and know of any reasons why it's doing that, Please let me know. Um, I'm very interested in this black pearl strain and developing it further and really leaning into it for you know some different productions and maybe even adding it to my breeding program. But it's just kind of a weird one. I was ready to go open the fridge and go out to all the chefs in Knoxville. As you guys can see, it's a pretty good weight off a 10 pound block. And it's a high value mushroom. I mean, like I said, I'm getting ten dollars a pound off of it roughly speaking that comes out to my oysters are sold at eight dollars a pound roughly speaking it's eighty dollar case black pearls are going at a hundred dollars a case so far the people that I've trialed them with have really enjoyed them and uh, roasting them oh my gosh these mushrooms roasted in fact I should do a video on for you guys about roasting these things it's fantastic especially roast them eat them with a steak it's it's basically the best thing ever it's like steak and scallops except better somehow what we need is a few good taters. What's taters, Brussels? Potatoes. Right. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. I don't really have anything else to talk about on the Black Pearl. If you've tried it, will you guys please let me know what you think? Um, if you're not seeing the wide range of phenotypes expressed, a bunch of little skinny tall mushrooms with big fat mushrooms next to them, and 
one cluster being really heavy and one cluster being a little uh, different. Um, if you guys wouldn't just let me know what your experience with the Black Pearl has been, maybe some tips and tricks that you guys have experienced that you uh, have found useful. And uh, with that, y'all, as always, remember to keep spawning culture. Thank you for watching, and please make sure to check out our other videos.